Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Uh, today's video could be uh, quite a short one. Um, it's just a topic that I've seen pop up a few times this last week and I felt it was really beneficial just to share with everyone on this channel. Uh, it's stepping away slightly from Excel, although obviously Excel is uh, at the heart of why we'd be using this technique. Uh, but we're going to be using forms that are available to us in OneDrive or your Microsoft Office 365 account. The real benefit of using these forms is that you can create a form uh, that's stored uh, obviously on the with OneDrive or Microsoft and it allows you to share that form with whether it's work colleagues or friends and family and they are able to access that form either on their mobile device or their computer and obviously fill in that form and capture and enables you to capture the data that you require. Ultimately, once you then capture that information, you can then pull it into Excel and do any analysis that you require. So if you're new to the channel, thank you very much for stumbling across the channel. Uh, please, if you do enjoy the video, give it a like. And also do remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button so you're notified of all our future videos. So to jump into today's video, what we're going to do is quickly create a form. I'll step through, obviously, the options and flexibility we have with using the forms and then we'll just be able to see what the information is coming out the other end. So from your OneDrive account, and that is where I'll be creating this form from today, uh, just because that's where I have access to it and obviously got my files stored. Uh, so hopefully and this will cover off the majority of people who've got a OneDrive account as well. If you haven't got a OneDrive account, all you need to do is Google OneDrive and you'll be able to create your account from there. So when you're into OneDrive, all you need to do from this page is go into New, and you'll see there's an option down here to go forms survey. So all we need to do is click form survey and that will bring us up with our default template to work with. So we've got a couple of sections on here so you can see we've got this first tab which is questions. So this is where we'll populate the questions for our survey. Responses tab, this is where you can see the responses uh, of everyone who sub uh, or submitted a response to that form. And then we're able to go into preview change the theme and then we've got some options when it comes to sending the form as well. So the first thing we'll do is populate our form and then we'll go through the other aspects of it. So the first thing we want to do is create a title for our form. So let's call this uh, example survey. So I've been very creative here with my titling and the description we'll just put in here uh, please um, use this form to submit your information. Sounds very obvious, but often a description that is obviously just telling the individual exactly what you want them to do is the best thing to use. And let's go for an image. We can either obviously upload an image, use one we've got on our OneDrive account, or we can do a Bing image search. So let's go for something nice like a beach again. Got nothing in comparison with what we're actually doing, but let's just include it just as a way of showing you how it works. So there we go, we've got our title, example survey, we've got a nice little image there to captivate the, this person submitting the form, and then just a quick little description to tell them what's needed. So we're going to add new, and add new refers to add new field to the form. So the first thing we'll do, and this can be a very basic form, is just ask them for their name. Within using this text field, we have a couple of options. We can have either a long or a short answer. So at the moment it's uh, on to, it's turned off, the long option. So this just means you're going to have a single line of text that you would use for probably capturing someone's name. If you're wanting to capture a response, so maybe like a sentence or multiple sentences, or best way of putting it, multiple lines of information, you can then toggle to a long answer and you can see it just gives you an expanded text box for the user to work with. But for ours, we're going to stick with the short one. The required toggle just enables us to say if it's a mandatory field or not. So if you have it unchecked as it is at the moment, uh, the user could skip this field, submit the form, and oh, that'd be fine. And but obviously you'd be end, you'd end up with a blank uh, field of information here when you come to look at the data. So if you want to ensure that the user does have to submit this information here before they can uh, submit the form, we just need to toggle that onto required. Add another field. We just went on to add new. And now we can change, choose from one of our other options. Let's go into date just to get an uh, just show you how that works. So we can enter in here a date. Uh, let's put date of birth, the first one that comes to mind. And then when the user is populating this, it will give them the calendar pop-up. So they can actually select the date from the calendar just to ensure obviously the format of the date captured is as intended as you required. And you can see by default that one that's been put to required as well. We'll go add new again. 
Uh, this time, let's say, let's do a multiple choice, and we'll ask them for their favorite color. So let's go option one, we'll go blue. Option number two, let's say we want yellow. And you can see the form has already identified what we're really trying to achieve here. So it's given us a load of suggestions with different colors. So we'll just click a few of those. If we decide that we don't want one of these colors, all we need to do is highlight over or hover over and you'll see the delete icon there to remove. Alternatively, if we have a preference of what order these appear in, all you need to do is hover over the left and you'll see these dotted icons. Click one of those and then you can click and drag and move uh, the option to the desirable location. You can obviously add more options here. And ultimately here we've got the choice of multiple answers. So at the moment it's left so they have to select or they can only select one option. Or if we toggle that on, they're able to select more than one answer for this question. But as it's the favorite, we'll leave it to just one answer being submitted. And once again, we've got it as required. We'll do one more field just to cover off another option here. So we could say comments. And we'll make this a long answer. So if they've got any comments, they can submit this to us. And I just clicked off there so we can see kind of the completed form. But if we do want to go and change any one of those questions, all you need to do is hover over. You'll see this gray shading comes around that field and sort of the entirety of what that field spills. Just click in and you'll be straight away into the edit mode. From here, we can then simply copy the question if we want to have a similar question to it, or maybe we've got values we want to use again. We can delete the question if we decide we don't want it, or we can use these arrows here to move the question up or down, uh, basically changing the order. So if you see at the moment, comments is number four. If we move it up, comments now becomes question number three, and you can see that favorite color has now dropped down here to number four. But we'll move that back. And that basically concludes how to add fields to your survey. Uh, responses, so this is, as soon as we start getting information here, we'll see this appear here. Uh, this is only the person creating the form that has access to this. And you'll also see here that we have an open an Excel button. So once we've got some responses, we can push this open in Excel, and this then obviously will export all of our submitted results into Excel so we can actually then do our analysis within the Excel tool. The one thing with this though is you'll see it's, well, it might help if I explain what you want to see. So at the moment, this Excel button here is just the Excel icon and obviously open in Excel. If I push this, it will extract all answers that have been received into the survey at the point of pushing that button. If any more uh, responses are submitted thereafter, we will then need to do another export of here to get the new, um, new information. Uh, basically, this, the Excel that's produced from this is not connected to the form, so it will not be dynamically updated with any new uh, survey submissions. So that's just one thing to be aware of. If, however, you do have a Microsoft or OneDrive Microsoft Office business account, then that will give you the access to, and you'll see a cloud icon next to this uh, Excel icon here, and that will mean that the two are um, connected, so any new survey submissions will automatically publish through to Excel. So that's one thing just to be aware of. But I think for the flexibility and the benefit this form gives of giving you the mandatory fields and allowing you to, count, um, uh, to gather the information, this is kind of a small thing to have to deal with to expect that data. Because once you've got it into the Excel format, you can then copy it or do any other manipulation you want in Excel. So it's just a sort of small price to pay really for the ability to have the access to these forms. So the other options we have, we can go into preview. So this, we, we can preview obviously what the recipient of the form will see. Uh, so we can see we've got a nice uh, tidy form here and um, what they'll be able to obviously populate their information into. We can also see what it will look like on a computer. So the first icon, we've got it here. And we can also see what it will look like on mobile. So we're also able to make sure that the formatting on the mobile device will be equally as um, uh, appealing, if that's the right word, or will actually work on the mobile device. So this, again, is another real benefit of using these forms is that it doesn't require the user to have Excel or to be using the Excel application to submit their responses. They can be using whatever device they have on their pocket or in their pocket or on their hand at that particular time. So it gives that real good flexibility when using the forms. To go back, in theme, we have the option to change the theme. So we can select, see that we've got some default ones here. Or we can upload an image if we wanted to. We've got a nice little uh, underwater scene here. Uh, or we can go skiing, or we can simply just change the color formatting. You can see what appears light in the background and just at the top here. 
So you can obviously play around with those or obviously use a theme that's more applicable to whatever your answers might be. But I'm just going to stick with the green because it sort of ties in with the Excel theme, you could say. Um, lastly, we've got um, three dot icons right at the top here. If you go into settings, this gives us a few more flexibility options with the form. So obviously we can turn off accept responses if we really wanted to, so we're no longer using the form. We can enter a start and end date. So if we only want the form to be available between a small period of time, we could put an applicable start and end date. Or alternatively, if we wanted it available just from now, we could put an end date if so required. We can shuffle questions. So if we want the questions to be randomly shuffled for each person going in, we can have that option. Uh, we can have email notification of each response. So basically, we will receive an email notification as soon as each person has submitted their response. And the last one we've got here is customize the thank you message. So we can go into here and we can simply just say your response has been submitted. Uh, we go, I don't know, let's just change this ever so slightly. Go thank you. Uh, your response was submitted. I don't know. But yeah, you can see you can actually obviously add that sort of personal aspect and tailor this uh, custom thank you message they'll receive upon entering their information. The last thing to do then is obviously we want to now share this form with our colleagues or friends. So we go on to send and we have a few options to do here. So we can go, we can just copy the link. We can have a QR code. So if we wanted to utilize that, we could get the embedment code. So we can get the actual code that we can embed this on a website. If um, you, you have a website and you want to add this form on your website. And the last one we have here is we've got uh, select and collect responses. So this is just where we can send an email uh, that will obviously ask the users, uh, well, the, the email will go to the users containing the link for them to obviously submit the form. What I'm all going to do is literally, I'm just going to copy the, the link just for the purposes of this tutorial. So I can go into send, copy the link, and then we'll go into a new tab and we'll just paste that link. And you can see we've now got the form here. So let me just now populate this. So let's go your name. Date of birth, I'm just going to select a random date. Favorite color, let's go for blue. Any comments? Uh, no more comments. Thank you. Being very polite in these submissions. And then when you hit submit, this is the well, the thank you message that the user will now receive, what we looked at briefly at the end there. Uh, so thanks, thank you, your response was submitted. So that's all being submitted. Uh, thank you very much. Very easy. So what we can now do is close down this sheet here. And you'll see I've still got this tab open, but all I really want to do is navigate into here, into the uh, Office 365 account. And I can't see the app, so I'll go into All Apps and then go into the Forms. And from here, you can now see my example survey here. So if I go back into that survey, we can now see that we have received a response. So let's go into that response there. And there you go, we can now see that there is this is the information. So we've got one response. The last latest response was from Ben. Latest response information. And we've got a, a tally and toll going on here of the detail that we've captured so far. Okay, so what I've just done there, I think I probably will cut that out because there's obviously no interest in you watching me actually populate, populate the forms. So I've just put a few more examples in there just so you can see how it looks. So I've put four, four responses I've now put in there. So we can see how this dashboard looks so you can get the idea of how everything is working out. Obviously with four responses, you can see it's quite split. So our pie chart is not real of use here. But we can see the last information that's been received and obviously the who it was coming from. What we can now do is because we've got some information, if we just click on open in Excel, you can see that Excel has now downloaded just down the bottom corner here. So let's open this up. And here it is. This is the Excel as it obviously is exported from that form. So again, apologies that the data I've entered in here is obviously of no real use or value. But hopefully that just shows you the benefit of obviously exporting the information from the form and how you can now take this detail and obviously utilize that within any analysis or reporting that you wanted to do. Uh, the other benefit as well, as you can see, you get a start time and end time or completion time. So this is the time that the person started filling out the form or probably access the landing page. And then this is the completion time in probably which they sub push the submit button. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I think it wasn't too long in the end, but I 
appreciate that I probably did go through quite a lot of information on that, so hopefully it wasn't too sort of raced through and it did all make sense. If you do, as always, have any questions, please leave a comment below the, the video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Lastly, if you haven't already, please do give the video a like if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button so you are notified of all of our future videos. Lastly, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in the next video. Before you go, don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel. You'll see everything from other functions and formulas through to tips and tricks. We've also created some playlists so you can see these categorized together. So make sure you check those out and get all those useful information. And obviously, as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button.